Are you looking for simple ways for you to increase your reach here online and really to get yourself out there, get visible? Well, stick around for today's episode because we have a special guest who will be joining us here right now live. So let's jump into it. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Ed Talk TV, conversations worth having. I'm your host, Ed Troxel. And if you're new around here, welcome. If you're returning, say hello. You know what to do right down there. If you've never been to one of my broadcasts before or you don't even know who I am, I am a Facebook Live producer. I help small business owners like yourself uh, show up, deliver, and engage here online easily through live broadcasting. Now, some of you might be thinking, okay, Ed, but I really don't like Facebook. I, I, I don't like Facebook Live. I'm not, I'm not one to be on camera. It's okay, I got you. I got you covered. And, and Facebook is just the tool. It's just a vehicle that helps us increase your organic reach and increase your growth here online on multiple channels. So if that sounds good to you, if you're interested at all, please reach out. Let's have a conversation about how I can help you with my new Business Gone Live service because it is a game changer. When you can embrace live broadcasting, it takes you to a whole nother level. Uh, today, we are excited because we get to have a special guest who will be joining us here shortly on the show. And what's awesome about this is that I'm using a new, uh, I've been using a new system, uh, but today we're actually going to have uh, our first guest here through the new system. That you're like, wait, what? Yeah, so uh, we've been using different programs in the past and had different guests on so today I'm really excited because we have the new one and we'll have our special guest Paula here in just a minute. Uh, I see she just popped on, so we'll bring her on in just a minute. Before we do, I want to share with you this post because some of you might have missed it and it's a good one. And, and I wanna share with you uh, one of the comments that just came in. So before I bring Paula on, let me go ahead and share my screen with you guys and it will give me a second there, boom. All right, so let me make that a little bit bigger for you guys, boom. So this post earlier, I said, fill in the blank. Before Henry Ford ever hired anyone for an important position, he would take them to lunch. If they blank, he would not hire them. Can you guess what that was? Even if you're watching the replay. Now, while you're guessing, I'm going to go ahead and read one of the comments from a special guest who will be on the podcast here coming up soon of season three. Let me go ahead and pull up the newest comments because Facebook makes us do that now. And this was one. Trevinia says, I've had the restaurant purposely mess up on orders to see how the applicant would ha handle the situation. Would they complain rudely? Would they just complain to me and act sweet to the server? It's a great test of character. And she goes on to say about what else happened. Now, here's the thing. The answer to this question before Henry Ford ever hired anyone for an important position, he would take them to lunch if they salted their food. If they salted their food, he would not hire them. It was simple as that. How crazy is that? Have any of you ever thought of that or done that um, or will be doing that now that you have uh, the option to because you learned that? Uh, I thought that was fascinating. So let me go ahead and bring on our special guest and we will jump into today's episode. Give me one second here to bring her on. Paula! Hello, how are you? Oh, I'm so good. You look great and this is working seamlessly, which is what I love on a Wednesday. <laughs> How is your day going? Oh, can you hear me? Maybe I spoke too soon. Let's uh, see. Awesome. I can kind of hear your audio. How about now? Let me try this. I'm going to remove you and bring you back. 
I'm gonna, Paula, if you're listening, hang tight. I'm gonna kick one, one of these out, and then I'm gonna bring this one back and see if that works. See so guys, this is what I love about live broadcasting, by the way, is you're able to test things and see what happens and, and bring people on. If you're watching the replay, you can fast forward um, past this. Let's see if I can get Paula to come back on. It looks like she had froze on her end. I'm going to go ahead and do that, Paula, and then we'll see if you come back. So while we're waiting for Paula to jump on, and, and guys, this is the beauty of live broadcasting is things happen. It's okay. Sure, it might be, you know, uh, uh, some, some time is wasted there, but it's okay. Always be ready for whatever happens, whatever comes your way, because that's the thing. We just never know. Whether it's in person or online, it doesn't matter. It's the same situation. We never know what's going to happen, and we try to make the best of it. <laughs> There's Paula. See? And that's what that's what happened. It worked. Oh, yeah, it's like live TV back in the day, right, Ed? Yes, yes. And <laughs> and that's what I love about this. And you know, I was just explaining to the viewers that you know the beauty of live broadcasting is is that you just never know what's going to happen. And mm -hmm. it's the same with being in in real life. You don't know what's going to happen when you open that door to you know walk out on the street or to mm -hmm. walk into the office or wherever it may be. So. That's what I really love about live broadcasting. And you kind of just roll with the punches. It's the best you can do. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone watching. They'll be watching the replay as well. So they get to know who you are. Awesome. So I'm Paula Diaco and I am a book and writing coach who works with entrepreneurs to help them write and publish their book. In addition, and I think this is what intrigued Ed, is that I help them get visible. Uh, before they decide to maybe write the book, but definitely before they publish the book. And here's an interesting irony. Often entrepreneurs want to write a book because it's going to get them visible. And then I come along and say, you need to get some visibility before you write the book. And in fact, in traditional publishing, they will ask you, what is your author platform? In other words, is there an audience for your book eagerly awaiting for it? So when it's launched, we have an audience to sell it to. So, but what we want to do in terms of visibility in advance is build some sort of audience that is eagerly awaiting. And the good news is very often entrepreneurs have developed a certain profile of people that they work with when they write a book those very same people are also their potential readers. So they're dual purpose. And I help them figure out who they are if they haven't already figured it out and how to at least build some population so that they have people that they can sell their book to. So that, in a nutshell, that's what I do. Yeah, I love that. And, and that is, that's what uh, drew my attention to you. Um, you know, for those watching, uh, Paul and I met through uh, a Facebook group and, and it's been amazing to be able to connect. And right away, I, I knew in my head, I was like, okay, we got to get Paula on the show because she's she's got so much amazing knowledge, especially when you think about the books that all of the entrepreneurs, I mean, myself included, we all want to write a book. Mm -hmm. And we all think, you know, we just got to jump and just do it. But then there's those times where we have to pump the brakes and, and think back on, okay, what, what are we really trying to get here? And exactly. So when new, uh, well, when entrepreneurs find you, cause they may not be new, but when mm -hmm. they find you, what does that process look like? Because let's say, you know, I, I come to you and I'm super excited about my book and, and I, I have all of the ideas and ready to go. And then I dump it on you. And then what happens? Mm -hmm. like, what's that? Yeah. Mean? yeah. So it's awesome when they do. And uh, I'm always excited when they have their, their, they know who their audience is. They know their big why. Why are they writing a book? Because it's no small task, right? So they have to take it pretty seriously. I love it when they have a topic and they know what it is they're going to write about. 
But what I do is I confirm all of that information. I actually sit down with them and we define and refine their audience. We define and refine their topic. We look at how they're going to market the book. Why are they writing the book? Are they really excited about it? Do they have adequate energy to sit down and write the book if they haven't done that already? Yeah. If they are going to publish traditionally, they need to understand that they're going to have to write a book proposal. Now I'm talking strictly nonfiction books here. This doesn't apply to fiction books. And I primarily work with people. In fact, I solely work with people who are writing nonfiction. Well, that isn't even accurate because I actually work with a very small population of people who write um, picture books, which is a oh. whole other story. I won't even get into that. Yeah. But for the people who are entrepreneurs, I'm helping them write their nonfiction book. Okay. And if they're going to publish it traditionally, then they need to write a book proposal. And that is their submission to an agent or editor to see if their book is worthy of publication. Now, you would think, okay, so if I self-publish my book, I don't have to do a book proposal. I just write the book and I publish it. Yes, you can certainly do that. That's the beauty of self-publishing is to have control 100% and the freedom to do what you want to publish your book. But I actually recommend that you do sit down and write a book proposal, even if you're self-publishing. Because a book proposal forces you to look really, really closely at the value of your book and, and the value of it in the marketing or in the, in the marketplace. Is it a book that people want to read? Is Are there already a lot of other books on the same topic? How is yours different? How can you distinguish yourself from the competition, if you will? Um, so it's kind of important really to examine all those things. But I love it when people come to me and they're enthusiastic and they've got a lot of answers. I just want to verify that everything is in place so that when they go forward, they can write a book that really, truly is going to get, um, you know, an audience of people who want to buy it and read it. And that all the work they put into it was really worth their while. Yes. And, and what I, uh, my brain is translating the book proposal and making it similar to, would you say, a business plan? Yeah, it exactly is a business plan. Yeah. Again, this is why it's beautiful to work with entrepreneurs, because this is not all that unfamiliar to them. Yeah. It's definitely a business plan. It's got a definitely has a sales aspect to it because you are pitching it to people who are going to make a decision. And for them, it's a financial decision. Ultimately, the publishing house has to make money, right? And, um, and you, if you're self-publishing, you, you are your own publishing house and you want to make money. So it's really good to have an idea about your concept that's sound and based in research that you've done online and have figured out that, yeah, this book actually has a place. There's a market for it. There, this is a cutting edge topic. It's like coming into its own. I'm, I'm like one of the first to write about it, but there is an audience there that's eager for it. That's like optimal. That's perfect. See, I love that. And, and do you have any recommendations that you give to people when it comes to trying to figure that stuff out? Like, you know, in my case, I'd say, you know, you got to start with Google <laughs> and start, yes. start yeah. checking mm -hmm. things out. But is that like, is there any other things that you kind of recommend to people that they should start? Because there's a lot of sure. entrepreneurs who, even with their business, they don't know that mm -hmm. what that audience looks like yet. Yeah. So if they work with me, I have a template for them for the book proposal itself. So it directs you in the thing that it asks for you to to research and to add to it so they have a template and of course my guidance if i'm coaching them through the process but they want to use well you know amazon to do book marketing research it's sure. it's right there it's going to tell you a lot of things it's going to tell you who your competition is it's going to tell you how that they rank on Amazon and um, that's really valuable. Yeah. Um, if you are, it, it will ask you to include information on your platform. So what are your social media stats looking like? If your social media stats aren't great, like you don't have a lot of contacts on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter, 
where else have you shown up where there's an audience that you engaged? Are you a public speaker? Have you spoken at some conferences and you would list them? Have you um, published uh, magazine articles, personal essays? Um, where did you publish them? Were they on, you know, on, um, on Huffington Post? Uh, or some place that purchased them where you were vetted by an editor or are they mostly on medium, which is an awesome place to, to build audience. Yeah. But you know, no one is, so you're not getting vetted there, right? You, it's a public blogging site, but it's still valuable. I don't diminish it. It's just that if you submit to an editor of a publication, you are getting vetted. So it's like a step up. And um, yeah. if you have written um, for several publications, um, they would look. They'd like to know the circulation of the publication. So there's ways around low social media um, uh, counts uh, to demonstrate that you've got uh, value in the topics that you are writing about or want to write about in your book, as well as audience potential audience for your book. I, I love that you brought that up because I know that so many people watching this or even listening to it will be thinking, okay, this is great. Like I want to do a book, but I don't have that many followers. I don't mm -hmm. have many people on my email list. Like where do I go? And mm -hmm. that right there was perfect because that is all about just people reaching out and trying yeah, to get exactly. ability, being that being a guest blogger, being a guest speaker. Yes. Yes. You may not get paid for that, but guess what? Your payment is getting that visibility. Exactly. So you can have proof to show mm -hmm. that you're visible and that yep. you know what you're doing. Yep. That's exactly right. Yeah. That makes me yeah. so happy. And I hope you guys watching really hone in on that and really understand that that is so powerful. Um, this is why, you know, for me, it's all about live broadcasting and really getting out there and being able to be visible so that you are relevant. You can see what's going on. You can hear what's going on. Um, you, there's so many things and, and ties into your book and being able to mm -hmm. show that you're building your audience, that you're building that rapport and really being out there uh, doing the work. That's what yeah. it's about. Mm -hmm. It really is. Um, people want to consume content. They want to consume your book if it's relevant to them. And so you being out there, being public, talking about what you know, talking about the topic that is dear, near and dear to your heart, right, is going to um, give you a lot of credibility. And it totally, again, feeds into the no like trust factor that in entrepreneurship is sort of a standard of, upon which you know that you are going to gain an audience of potential clients, right? Um, you can, you know, I'm on this show. There's, that's not a random thing. It's like, I'm glad to be on this show because I'm coming out with a book. It'll be on writing. And so I want to be building my audience as well. So when you invited me, I naturally said yes. Now let's get it. And you haven't asked me about this, but I no, have, no. but writers are, uh, most of the writers that I work with, including myself are yeah. introverts yeah. or they're also shy. And I am both an introvert and I am shy. Uh, there's a difference between the two. Um, but certainly regarding introversion, you know, I, I make a really good recluse. Uh, I like to be with people, but for short periods of time. And then I energize when I'm not with people, which is the opposite of an extrovert who gets all of their energy from being with people, right? Yep. So when I talk about platform building with my clients, they I immediately the eyes roll, they grimace, and they say, Oh, I just can't do that. I can't be seen. I can't, I can't go out and do the things you want me to do. I can't speak in front of audience. I'm afraid to speak. But you know what? The more you do it, the better you are, and the more fun it becomes, right? Yeah. I wouldn't have done this. I wouldn't have done a live a couple of years ago, but I have a group and I practiced in the group and I spoke to the people there and I found, you know what? This is really super fun. It's yeah. like I'm, I'm talking about the things I love. They get to ask me questions. I get to answer them. I get to help them. So if you come from um, a spirit of serving, then it isn't so hard. It's actually a lot of fun. Oh, I'm so glad you mentioned that because yes, that is, 
that is the thing. And see, I didn't really know about the uh, the live thing for you because you mm -hmm. seem natural from the conversations <laughs> we've been in and stuff. That's, um, and that's it's awesome. Like you're ready to pop in on the live. So right. that's a fun fact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not a tech person, so sorry about that. Sorry about that, but yeah, I, I'm happy to be in front of people. I just gave a, a presentation last week to a room full of people who all run a, want to write books, and it was just super fun. It's like I brought all my friends. I didn't know a single person in the room, but I brought. It was like bringing all my friends, and we were having a conversation, yeah. and that's what it's all about. Look at it as a conversation. Don't look at it as a TED talk. Right. You know, or something where, you know, you're risking your reputation if you goof up. It's not that. Just take it a little lighter, ramp it down a little bit, you know, take a deep breath and just jump in because people want to hear from you. If they like what it is you're about, they want to know you. And so take advantage of that. And, and um, don't be the world's best recluse. In fact, come out once in a while and enjoy being in front of people. Yes, and, and I love how you mentioned it, it uh, allowed you to be more energized and ready to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've done that before, before doing a speaking gig. I have yes. gone on live to just shake off the nerves and talk to right. the audience here and say, you yep. know, listen, I'm about to go in front of all these people and mm -hmm. I just needed to hang out with you guys for a minute, yeah. get in the zone and shake those nerves off. Yeah. And then boom, you're ready to go. And exactly. You're set. And it's so fun. Yeah, it is. It is. Look at it as fun. It's there's, Oh, I get it. It, it. It's scary. And you know, everybody, what is it that taxes and public speaking are like the worst thing? I don't know. I'm totally botching up the quote, yeah, but you yeah. know what I mean? Like people dread it. It's like worse than, you know, I don't even know what, um, but it's not really like anything. It takes practice. So have somebody show you how to do it and then just practice in small, in front of small groups and, you know, where you're safe and um, look at it. I have a good friend who says speech, uh, public speaking coach. And she said, you are the gift to the audience. So always look in you know, what you have to say is a gift to them. And they're there to hear from you. They want, don't want you to goof up. They're actually very empathetic about that. And they don't want you to goof up. They actually want you to do well. So they're there with you. Consider them like with you, not not something scary that you have to get done. It's it don't have to look at it that way. But you know, speaking is an awesome way to to get um, visibility and to build your platform. And you know, if you have an author site, you definitely put links, you know, to the places you've been where you've got video. Um, that's you know, agents. So here's the deal too: if you are submitting to agents and they are interested, they will look at for you online. That's okay. a given. Yeah, they're gonna totally Google you, see where you show up, what are you doing? Um, what are you saying on Facebook? So if you have a public timeline, yep. might be the time to clean it up maybe. Um, if you have a, a business page or an author page, they're definitely gonna be reading that. Again, they're gonna look for counts, but they're also gonna look for engagement. They wanna know who's engaging with you. And so it's huge. Yeah, engagement is huge. You could be talking to 10,000 people and if nobody is commenting, liking and sharing your posts, you're talking to 10,000, you're not really talking to 10,000 people, right? right? You're just showing up and for not. Yeah. So, you know, get engagement, get people involved. It doesn't have to be controversial, all friendly in tone. I mean, it depends yeah. on what your book is about, but sure. keep it friendly, keep it uh, civil, have a good discourse. Um, definitely engage people because I know of at least when I know there are hundreds, if not thousands of these circumstances, but I know a local um, couple who are authors and they have a cute little farm and they just created a Facebook page to share the cuteness of their farm. Well, it was so cute. Everybody was joining that page. When they decided to write a book, they sold that book within I don't want to say minutes, but with within a day or two, they sold everything. Like they sold, they sold out uh, because they had developed an audience of engaged 
you know, listening people who were eager to know. And when they had something to sell them, people were like, of course I want it. I love absolutely everything about this couple and their farm and their sheep and the whole thing. So yeah. they bought it. That's what you want is you want raving fans, right? Love that. Yeah. And that's the key is having those raving fans who are right there paying attention that they're yeah. and that's the thing we have to listen to. Like if the farm in this example, if the, the farm family didn't listen to what people were saying and, and what weren't engaging with their audience, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they would have never known that there was an actual market for their book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They wanted more stories. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, and know that humans love stories anyway. We are all wired for stories. So yeah. give them stories. Do a live stream. Tell a story. Um, do blog posts and have it be a story. I mean, you know, show off what you are about. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not that some people think that it's, um, I don't know, just totally self-serving. No, you are giving people things they want. And if it's positive, great content then give them what they want and at the same time you are engaging them creating an audience getting the visibility you're doing so many things and all of it is good yeah oh yeah. i love that yeah. uh, i want to be respectful of your time uh did we sure. hear everything that you wanted to uh share with us mm -hmm. yep awesome and where can people find you and and also make sure to put in the comments later as well so that they can click on it but where can people find you online to connect and learn more about you? Sure. So my website is uh, right, W-R-I-T-E storiesnow.com. So they can find me there. Um, they can also find me on uh, Facebook. I have a Write Stories Now business page. They can find me there. And uh, yeah, people are welcome to, you know, reach out if they have questions, happy to answer questions for folks if they, you know, heard something here and didn't quite understand the fullness of it. Cause I mean, publishing is such a complicated business. So I'm happy to answer questions. I love that. And you guys be sure to connect with Paula and I just popped in the link at the comments as well. Awesome. So be Great. sure to connect with her. Uh, I appreciate you jumping in here and sharing this knowledge with everyone for those of you who are thinking about writing a book, maybe are starting the process, mm -hmm. like reach out, connect with Paula. She, she's amazing, as you can tell from this live, that she's got some great tips for you. And, and that PDF that you have sounds great for those who work with you. So definitely be sure to go check her out. Awesome. Thank, thank, thank you, you so much, Paula. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See, guys, that's what I love about this show. That's what I love about live broadcasting. You just, you get to meet so many amazing people online. You get to connect with them and then you can bring them on and have a conversation. And that's what it's all about. As you just heard, um, you know, you've heard it from me before. You're going to continue to hear it from me. Uh, for me, it, it's been live streaming since 2015 when it first came out with Periscope. That has been my, my door that I opened just a crack to see what opportunities can come. And it's just flung wide open since then. And you've been seeing that more and more the last few uh, weeks and, and you'll see it even more coming up here in 2020 uh, because live broadcasting has just taken me personally and professionally to a whole nother level. And it, it's, it's amazing opportunity. And I want you guys to embrace it. Even if you think it's not for you or you're, you're on the fence, we just reach out, reach out so we can at least open that door just a crack for you and really help you take your business to the next level because it, it's an amazing tool that's right here at your fingertips and you just have to start. You just have to start. Show up, deliver, and engage. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Feel free to uh, pop a comment down below. Even if you're watching the replay, let me know how everything's going and go check out Paula. Go see her and connect with her, especially here on Facebook. So have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you're at, and we will talk to you soon. Take care.